Hello class, I'm going to do a recording now for section 8.2 addition with real numbers. And let's start here with um, the first rule uh, on page 27 of your workbook. It's called the rules for adding with real numbers. And I also refer to it as a rule number one in this course for your sign number rules. And if you can fill this in, you should also go through your learn, but I do need this page today to go over the rules. I do need to go over this excerpt here. So, so to add two real numbers with like signs, what we need to do is um, add their absolute values and we need to use the common sign, okay? So another way of saying that is um, if your signs are the same, uh, you want to add the numbers and you want to keep the sign. Okay, so if you could uh, pause the video and write that down. And then we're going to go to, uh, there is really only one rule or one example in our workbook that um, emphasizes that rule. And that is, Let's see, on page three of, oh, excuse me, page 32. Okay, so let's go to page 32. Here's page 32 of your workbook. And let's look at number three. So you see how you have a negative number plus another negative number? Okay, that's gonna equal a negative result. This is rule number one. Okay, you have um, like signs. So according to what we just saw, we're supposed to add and then we're supposed to keep the sign the negative sign, okay? All right, so I'm gonna just line these up. Here, this is where I'll put my answer, but to show my work, I'm gonna line these up here. Okay, because I'm lining up decimals. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Carry the one. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then I'm going to keep the negative. So that's going to be a negative 12.2 or 12 and two tenths, 12 and two tenths. Okay. Um, so in this course, you have to show your work. Usually the numbers won't be really not very large, um, but you still have to show your work. And then of course you can use your calculator to check your work, but you've got to have your work shown for the full credit. And this doesn't take five grueling hours to to compute it doesn't so just just get it done to satisfy your your teacher's request and then i'll show you how to do on the calculator on the 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 ti30 xs multi view or plus another negative 7.8 and you can see that gives you a negative 12.2. Okay, so the calculator knows the rules. The calculator knows the rules. So your teacher wants you to do it on paper first, like when you do your homework, and then you can check it on the calculator. Okay, but at least you're thinking it through the process first and your rules, okay? All right, okay. So now let's go to the second rule. back on page 27. And now this is the second room. Let me just freaking enlarge this a little bit. Okay, so here's your second rule. Okay, so, and you can see your teacher here on the side has rule number two, rule number two. This says, so I can increase this a little bit. Okay, 
there we go. Okay, so this says, the rule says to add two real numbers with unlike signs, with unlike signs, okay? So you wanna subtract. I know it sounds strange because you're adding, you see a plus sign and you're adding two numbers with different signs. You either have, you see you either have a positive plus a negative or you have a negative plus a positive. So you see that you see that plus sign there, right? But it actually wants you to subtract. That's the rule. Subtract their absolute values. So they say the smaller from the larger. And so I wrote it like this, larger absolute value, take away smaller absolute value. Okay, so you wanna do some subtraction on the side there. And then, you know, you're adding two numbers to different signs and you've got to decide, okay, what's my answer going to be? Is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? So the way you decide is you're supposed to use the sign of the number that has the larger absolute value, the one that's got the bigger distance, you know, the distance from zero on a number line. That's how you decide, you know, which sign to honor, the positive or the negative. So another way of saying that is this. If the if the signs if the signs are different, okay. So you see, you're adding and they're different. See, they're adding and they're different. If the signs are different, you're supposed to subtract the smallest. Subtract the smallest from the largest. Okay, and then you're supposed to keep the sign of the largest. Okay, so that's uh, another another way another way to rephrase this. Okay, thinking of that. Okay, so write that down. When we take our test, like our first test, you can use this this first sheet. You can use this first sheet while you're taking your test, and then you should also complete the practice test. The practice test in your is it's in your workbook. It's at the end of chapter eight. You have a practice test, so you should be working on that a little bit each day after we cover the material. And you can use that practice test while we're taking the real test to help jog your memory. And then you can use the, the first page of each lesson uh, because oftentimes it has little rules like this. Um, and then you cover that and learn also 15 minutes and learn but you can use that to help jog your memory, okay? So to show you an example of that, um, let's start that with page 28. Let me fold this up. Okay, this is page 28. Okay, so don't don't worry about these. You see these little, you see those little, don't worry about these. I have a teacher's edition and um, those are like, uh, they would be in red, uh, but this is a copy. So they would usually be in red, teacher's edition. So those are like answers. So I usually, sometimes I white that out so you don't see that, um, but I don't always, I don't always white them out. So I just left these there. And I'll work around that, okay? But um, if we look at number seven first, we look at number seven first, see how you're adding several, several add-ins? Remember, these are called add-ins. And you see how some of them have plus signs and some of them have negative signs? Okay, what you should do is you should first, um, like, like for example, all the negatives, you should first collect all the negatives. And, and then you can use rule number one on that. So like I can use on this right here, I can use rule number one, where that basically says that you're supposed to add and keep the negative sign. So if I, if I show you that, my work, negative 1.2 plus negative 2.5. And then I add that up. Five and two is seven decimal point. Two and one is three and then negative. So that's a negative 3.7, okay? So, so now my new problem becomes 
the original 3.2 plus the negative 3.7. And if you don't want to put parentheses around it, you don't have to. You notice the book likes to do that because it likes to draw attention. Hey, look at me, I'm a negative. Hey, look at me, I'm a negative. You don't really need the parentheses there, but you know you do need the negative, okay? All right, so then now, now this uses rule number two. You're adding two numbers with different signs. So remember, you've got to subtract. And when you subtract, you're supposed to do the larger absolute value. So 3.7 is larger you know, distance from zero than 3.2. So when you subtract, here you want to do 3.7, take away 3.2. You don't want to do it the other way, set it up the other way. 3.2 minus 3.7. No, you need to do the larger minus the smaller. Okay. So so remember negative 3.7 is larger because remember the absolute value of negative 3.7 is 3.7. The absolute value of the other one, 3.2, is 3.2. So you see this, the 3.7 is bigger than 3.2. This is what I call LAV, larger absolute value. So sometimes in my notes, you'll see me write LAV for larger absolute value. This one's bigger. And if you backtrack to its sign, well, what was its sign? Pay attention to its sign. Was it positive or negative? See how it's it was negative to begin with. That means that means that that means that our answer is going to be negative, okay? Because you're trying to decide what sign to go with, and you you honor the one that's got the bigger absolute value. So when I subtract, seven minus two is five, and three minus three is zero. So it's a negative. 0.5, okay? And you see that's that's what they have here, negative 0.5, okay? All right, okay, now if you look at number four, look at number four, okay? We have um, eight point, or eight plus negative three, eight plus negative three. Um, okay, so I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. I'm looking, I have a window back here and I see a fox trotting across the backyard. And so it, it kind of caught my eye. So sorry, I saw a fox trotting across my backyard to the back there. So I'm sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> I have a, a nice window, bay window back here and I can see it. So I'm teaching and recording and then I see this fox kind of trot back here it's interesting sorry nature enjoying nature too mm -hmm. okay so so sorry about that let's look at number four eight plus negative three eight plus negative three that is rule number two that is you adding two numbers with different signs rule number two so you want to subtract on the side I'm going to show eight minus three, which is five. And then you're gonna keep the sign of the number with the bigger absolute value. So the, the five is larger, right? Eight is larger than, than three. Eight is larger than three. So you're gonna go with the sign of the positive. So the, and so this is just five. Okay, and that's what the book says that the answer is it's five, okay? So remember that that's because the absolute value of eight is eight. The absolute value of negative three is three. So if you look at both of these results here, do you see the one with the eight? That's the larger absolute value, okay? Okay, if you look at number five, two plus negative eight, okay? So again, this is, this is row number two. And so I'm gonna, we're gonna subtract eight, take away two, okay? You're gonna do the eight from here, eight, take away 
and then two. Eight take away two is six. Okay, and as far as the sign goes, which sign do you keep? Eight is larger in distance, larger absolute value. Eight is bigger than, than two. So what was the sign to begin with? See, see how it was negative? So this is gonna have to end up being a negative six. And that's, that's what the book says, see? That's what the book has. So again, the absolute value of two is two. The absolute value of negative eight is eight, okay? This eight has what I call LAV, the larger absolute value, larger absolute value, okay? So you wanna keep the sign of this number when you backtrack, see how it's negative? So this is gonna be a negative six, all right? Okay. And with number eight, um, you have to you have to figure this first. I'm gonna highlight this. See how you have an absolute value in there? We learned that uh, a few days ago, right? That was a previous lesson in our our notes, right? Absolute value. So you have you actually have to figure figure this first. You have to have to you have to you actually have to figure out what is the absolute value of negative five first. So the absolute value of negative five is just five. Okay. So now this becomes 13 plus five. Okay. And then you don't need a fancy sign rule, rule one or rule two. This doesn't use rule one, doesn't use rule two. This is just something you know we learn with counting numbers, right? Back in elementary school, 13 plus five is 18. So you, this is not a rule one nor rule two, but you know you do have to figure this absolute value first. You do have to figure what that is first to see what your new problem is. So then you forget about this and you just concentrate on this, 13 plus five, which is 18. Okay, now, on number six, notice how you're adding fractions. Notice how you're adding a negative one six plus a seven fifteen. Okay, so you're adding a negative one six plus a seven fifteen. All right. Okay. And um, I think let's see. I think when I set this up, I think I'm going to set it up. Um, stacking it. I think I'm going to stack them instead of writing it like that. Let me stack them. So negative one six plus seven over 15 like this. And then put little times here, little times there. Okay. Um, if, if you don't want to stack them like that, then what you could do is, you know, write it across and then you would put little times here, little times there, if you want to write it across. But otherwise, if you're going to stack them, then, then I'm setting this up for stacking them, okay? But, but you have to find a common denominator, okay? So your denominators, you're going to make a list of multiples and you start with the biggest denominator first which is 15 and then the six and this is called lcm which is also lcd so lcm stands for least common multiple LCD stands for least common denominator. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that uh, method first. Okay, because because a lot of times in in, in elementary school, uh, junior high, a lot of times what the teachers do is they just tell the students to just uh, find a common denominator and to do six times 15. 
multiply the bottom number six times 15, but that's kind of a big number, right? If I do six times 15, right? That's kind of a big number, right? 90. I, I'm hoping that usually if you use multiples, you can usually find something hopefully smaller. That's our hope, right? To work with numbers that are smaller. So I just gave my multiplication chart out and you have two multiplication charts in your workbook, right? This one doesn't have enough as far as it goes up to 12. You have the multiples for six here, but not for 15, but you've got the bigger multiplication chart. And if I go across, see 15 times one is 15 15 times two is 30 15 times three is 45 so all they're doing is multiples they're, they're just adding 15 watch 15 plus another 15 c is 30 and then if i add another 15 see how that's 45 and then if i add another 15 see how that gives you 60 so that's what multiples are. If I add another 15, oops, it gave me a syntax error, but, but you get the idea, right? If I add another 15, it gives me 75. So those are the multiples. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a list. And you saw how, how if I did 15 times 6, it gave me 90. So I, I guess I could go up to that, that. So 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. 15 times three is 45. 15 times four is 60. 15 times five is 75. 15 times six, or one, two, three, four, five, yes, times six is 90. Okay, and I'm gonna stop there, okay? I list a few, okay? And then I'm gonna start with a six. So now if I go to the six, now for the six, you can use this multiplication table. It's a little bit bigger and it does have six there. Six times, six times one is six. Six times two is 12. Six times three is 18. Six times uh, four is 24. Six times five, look at that, is 30. So you see, so six, 12, 18, 24, and 30. So you see that right there? See that right there? See how that matches? So that's the least common multiple, least common denominator. Okay. All right. So then, so then now I'm going to build up my fractions. So this, this is called, this is called build up the fraction. That's what that's called. Okay. So if I start with, if I start with the bigger number 15, 15 times what gave me 30? So 15 times two, see if I count one, two, one, two. So 15 times two gives me 30. But what you do to the bottom, you also do to the top because this is kind of like, like two over two, which is one, right? So you're multiplying by a form of one described as two over two, okay? So now when you multiply it, seven times two is 14, 15 times two is 30. Okay, so you built, so 715 is equivalent, equivalent to 1430. That means that if you have an object and you cut it into 15 equal pieces and you give somebody seven, that's the same amount as you taking the same object and breaking it up into 30 pieces and giving them 14. It's the same amount, it's equivalent. Okay, now for the one six, if I count one, two, three, four, five. So six times what is 30? So six times five. So I multiply this times fives. And again, you know, five over five is one. It's like you're multiplying by a form of one, okay? Now here, negative one times five is a negative five, okay? That's like a, that's like a, a whole nother rule, a sign rule in itself that we're actually gonna formally see later on in this chapter. So it's really not fair uh, for them to throw in that negative one six because we haven't done 
I think that's like rule four. Uh, when you multiply, different signs produce negative results, which you're going to learn formally. Okay, it's a negative. Um, and then seven times, oh, excuse me, and six times five is 30. So now you have negative five over 30 plus 14 over 30, but you see how you have a common denominator? Okay, so, so you can show your work this way going up and down like this, but this is called vertical, right? This is called vertical work, right? Or, or you can come back and show your work horizontally like this one, this is horizontal work. Right here, so on the six, you would multiply the sixes, we said times five here. So one times, or it's negative one times five is negative five. Six times five is 30 plus, and on the seven fifteens, you multiply seven fifteens times twos. Two times seven is 14, 15 times two is 30. Okay, see? So you can show your work like this horizontally or like this vertically, you choose, all right? Okay, but you, but you have to show your work. On the computer, if you only use your calculator and you, and you get the answer, you get the answer in the computer, but you know you have to upload your work. And I already told you as your teacher that I grade with an eagle's eye. So, so I'm gonna grade, I'm gonna look at your work. I need to see um, this work, right? Either, either you're gonna use the list of multiples or in a little bit, I'm gonna redo the problem and, and do like the six times 15. You guys ever get big numbers, but I need, I need to see that work. And then I need to see you build up the fraction. So this is building up the fraction. Okay, also this is building up the fraction. Okay, but you need to have that. If you don't have that on the paper, then I will only give you like one point for the correct answer. But you won't, if it's worth four or five points, you will lose those other points for not showing your work. Okay, so this course is like not about, do you know how to type on your calculator, right? I need you to know that you know how to come up with the math. So you could check it on your calculator, right? but you need to know this math here, okay? To demonstrate that. And hopefully this was taught, you know, somewhere in your early years of high school, high school, hopefully, um, or somewhere, you know, before high school, hopefully this has been taught and this is like a refresher, hopefully a review, hopefully. But if not, then um, sorry, but it's time to learn the material, time to learn the material because we got to get you ready seriously like time time right you're working on associate's degree uh it's time is ticking is important you got to everybody's working on associate's degree you got to get that math under your belt so everybody needs liberal arts math or business business math or statistics or college algebra everybody needs that for an associate's if you're going to earn a certificate then you actually don't don't need the math like those college level math classes for a certificate. But, but if you earn an associates you, and your pay grade, you earn a little bit more for the associates because you, you do a little bit more and you're studying and you, and you earn an A, B or C in the college level classes, okay? So the pay is a little bit better, right? Because of that. Okay, so you gotta learn the foundations. We gotta teach you the foundations, okay? So that's my goal is to teach you the foundations, okay? So, and again, if you if you get stuck and you need help, remember we have our tutoring. It's right now it's virtual math world. I have the link in your Canvas course. And then come fall, when we've gotta go back on campus, everybody goes back on campus. Hopefully you're getting yourself fully vaccinated, right, on campus, then, then they're going to start doing face-to-face uh, -face classes again and um, tutoring in math row again come fall, okay? Um, and so, but until now, it's all virtual. So, but if you need help, we've got the help available. You just need to go out and seek it, right? Okay? All right. So now, now you have negative 5 over 30 plus 14 over 30. And this, this uses rule number two. You're adding... 
two numbers with different signs, right? One's a negative and one's a positive. So remember what they say, you've got to subtract. So on the side here, your teacher's going to subtract right here, 14 minus 5. I think that's, is that 9? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, it's 9. And, and it's going to be a, a positive 9 because 14 is bigger. 14 is bigger than 5. So you keep the sign of the number with the bigger distance. 14 beats out, beats out the negative 5. So this is going to be 9 over 30. Okay, and then it just so happens that that can be reduced. And so when you when you reduce, you communicate to your teacher what you're going to reduce by. And we're going to actually reduce this by three. This three is called like a, a, a divisor, right? A, like a greatest common divisor. So GCD, greatest common divisor, you can reduce the top and the bottom by three without getting a decimal. Okay. So if I show you that nine divided by three, nine divided by three, see no decimals is three. And 30 divided by three is 10. Okay. All right. And that's that's lowest terms. That's that's a proper, it's called a proper fraction. And that's in lowest terms. And that that would be your answer. And and you see if you go back over here and look, see they had three tens there. Okay. Now, if, if you don't want to use the LCM, then the other one would be just to multiply the denominators 16 times five. So then you would show your work like this. You would say common denominator equals, and you would put um, six times 15. And you saw that six times 15 was 90. Okay, and then when you build up your fraction, you have negative one six times. So here, when you say, okay, six times what? Six times what is 90? It's going to be the other number. See, six times 15. These are gonna be 15s. Okay, and then plus seven over 15. They put little times here. So you're saying, okay, 15 times what gives you 90? Well, you see 15 times six. So each is like, each is each other's, each other's factor, basically. Each is each other's factor, okay? So six times 15, 15 times six, each other's factor. So then, so then now uh, negative one times 15 is negative 15. 6 times 15 is 90, plus 7 times 6 is 42, over 15 times 6 is 90, okay? Or you need, or you need to double check, you know, just 6 times 7 times 6, you need to double check, it's 42, okay? Let's double check that. Okay, and then this is, this is a rule number two. You're adding two numbers with different signs, so you got to subtract. Now, you, this is going to equal 90 here in the bottom. This, is, this stays the same. The denominator stays the same. But on the side, you're going to subtract 42 minus 15. So this is, becomes a 12. Just download down, down to 3, decreases to 3. 12 minus 5 is a 7, right? 3 minus 1 is a 2. And you can check 20, 30, 35, 40, 40. If you add both of these up, you should get 42, okay? So it's 27, okay? And then now you've got to reduce, got to reduce. So this I think reduces um, probably by nine. You, you think this can be reduced by nine as the greatest common 
divisor. Let's try it. 27 divided by nine is three. And 90 divided by nine is 10. Okay, see no decimals. And see how we get the same thing that this student would have gotten showing their work, except this student over here showed their work using least common multiples. This student used uh, just, uh, just a common denominator. They didn't find the least common denominator. They found just a common denominator by multiplying the denominators, but they still build up their fraction. So the work is a little bit different here. And then they reduce uh, sometimes they don't ever, like, sometimes people don't see the nine readily. They might have to reduce by three, uh, but if they reduce by three, they would have to probably reduce by three, probably three times. They might have to reduce by three and then by three, because three goes into 27 uh, nine times, and then three goes into nine three times. So yeah, if they, if they use, if they didn't use nine they'd have to reduce by three uh, like two or three times to get to get down to this okay um so i don't know you want me to show you that let's see i can probably show you that up here 27 divided by 90 see if i divide that by three 27 divided by three is nine and 90 divided by three is 30. And then I have to reduce again by three. Nine divided by three is three. And 30 divided by three is 10. Uh -huh. So then I just have to reduce a couple of times. It wasn't three times, it's just a couple of times. But then I get three tens, okay? All right, okay. Um, let's see, I guess I can go over these while we're here. Um, it says the sum of a positive number and a negative number is always going to be positive. So if I try to make something up, the sum of a positive number, I'll just put eight and a negative number. So I'm going to just pick on negative 12 is always going to be positive. Okay, well, that they're saying the book saying that's false. And you, here I'm all you have to do is think of an example where it will come out false. This, you know, is is rule number two. So you would subtract, right? 12 minus eight is four, but it's going to be a negative four because this one's bigger. This distance is bigger than, than eight. 12 is bigger and it and it happens to be C a negative. So that would be a negative four. Okay. The absolute value of eight is eight. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. This one has the larger absolute value. This one's bigger. So when you backtrack, what was it to begin with? It was negative. So the negative beeps out. Okay. Number two. And if you ever need to pause, if I ever go too fast and you need to pause the video to write, you, you can pause it. You're watching a video, so you can pause it and then start it up again when you're done writing or when you're done comprehending it, thinking about it. Okay, two says that when adding two numbers with unlike signs, and that's kind of what was happening here, you're adding two numbers with unlike signs, the result uses the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. Yeah, and that's true. This one, we were adding two numbers with different signs. So we had to subtract, but then we use a sign on the negative uh, from the 12, why? Why that one and not eight? Because 12 is bigger in distance, absolute value distance than eight, okay? So that's true. And then this one says that the sum of, a po of two positive numbers can equal zero. The sum of two positive numbers can equal zero. Yeah, that I don't think that can that can never happen. They say that that's false. 
Yeah. Um, the sum of two positive numbers is always going to be positive. Okay. And they say that zero is actually neutral. Zero is actually not a positive nor a negative number. Okay. Yeah. And really the only, the only way you can get zero is if like, uh, if you have um, a number plus its opposite. If I rewrite this, um, a number plus its opposite zeros out. So like if I have five plus its opposite, negative five, that zeros out. A number and its opposite, five plus a negative five, that zeros out. Because the rule says when you're adding two numbers with different signs, you're supposed to subtract five minus five. Subtract them, zero. And then you're supposed to keep the sign of the number with the bigger distance, right? But in this case, uh, they're, um, in this case, like they're tied. The absolute value of five is five. The absolute value of negative five is five. So they're tied, the distance is tied. This, this is kind of like neutral, okay? Okay, and then if I go back to page 32, we look at these problems. Like this, this is the ones that the math department made. 14 plus negative 13. See, that's that's rule number two. You're adding two numbers with different signs. So remember, you're gonna have to subtract 14 minus 13. Okay, the absolute values 14 and 13. That's only one. And then you keep the sign of the number with the bigger distance. 14 is bigger than the 13. This one beats out and it's positive. So this is one. Okay. So, so the absolute value of 14 is 14. The absolute value of negative 13 is 13. And 14 has the larger absolute value. And when you backtrack, see, it's positive. Okay. Okay. Sometimes the book will stack. The, the problems. And so really there's like an imaginary plus sign right here. Okay, they just don't put that. But this is also, this is also rule number two. You're adding two numbers with different signs. One's, one's negative and this one's positive. Okay, and you're adding a negative and a positive. So you still have to subtract 45, take away 17. You got to subtract the 45 and the 17. You're just looking at absolute value distance. So make this a 15, decrease that, make it a three. Seven, another seven is 14 and one gives you 15. So that's eight and three minus one is two. And you should double check that if you add these up, it should give you 45, yeah, okay. And then you want to keep the sign of the number with the bigger distance. So 45 beats out the, the 17. So the 45 is positive. So it's going to be a positive 28. Okay. So again, you know, on your calculator, if you're doing your calculator, this one you would you would do a negative, remember is down here, negative 17 plus 45. So I know you don't see a number there, a sign there, but it's going to be positive. And you see, you get you get twenty eight, okay. Um, but again, on your test, you've got to show show your work on here. So you show your subtraction by hand on that, okay. Okay, and then on number four, remember we said you the absolute value is done first. Remember, you got to take you got to do this one first. You got to do this first. The absolute value of negative nine is, right, just nine, right? You know that? Absolute value of negative nine is just nine because you have a number line 
here's zero, here's negative nine, and you're taking the absolute value, you're me which means you're measuring distance from zero. So you got a measuring tape. Remember, nobody's measuring tape has any negatives on them. Nobody's rulers have negatives on them. So when you read this out, like how many units is that? From zero to nine, that's nine units of length. You're just going in the uh, west direction, right? So you have north, south, east, west. So you're just heading in the west direction, but it's nine units of length. So you've got nine plus negative 18. 9 plus negative 18. And that's rule number two. You're adding two numbers with different signs. So remember, you're going to have to subtract. And 18 take away a 9 is 9. But then the sign is going to be negative. Because see, 18 is, is larger, right? The absolute value of negative 18 is 18, right? The absolute value of just nine is nine. This one is bigger. And when you backtrack, see it was negative to begin with. So this that means that your nine is gonna have to be a negative nine. Okay, so I hope that hope that makes sense. And and all I'm doing is I'm exercising these two rules. Is it rule one or is it rule two? And a lot of this has rule two where you're having to subtract. See? And then you use the sign of the number that's got the bigger absolute value. So I'm doing a lot of rule two mostly in this workbook. And that's just what the department, when they make the problems, I'm just kind of focused on that, I guess. Okay. And so here, when you do problem like number five, I would like add up all the negatives. See these negatives here? That is uh, rule number one, right? That tells you to add them up and keep the negative sign, right? So you wanna add those up, line up your decimal points, add those up, Use your fingers. Keep your negative, right? So when you add these up, that gives you a negative 15.8. So now you have 10.5 plus negative 15.8. And now that now is rule number two. Rule number two, adding two numbers with different signs. So you're going to have to subtract. And then you're going to keep the sign of the number with the bigger distance. So the, the negative, the negative is going to beat out. The negative is going to beat out. So the absolute value of negative 15.8 is 15.8. The absolute value of 10.5 is 10.5. The 15.8 has a larger absolute value. And when you backtrack, see how it's negative. Okay, so it's going to be negative. And then you have to show your subtraction. 15 point, you're basically subtracting these two. 15.8 minus 10.5. Eight take away five is three. Five take away zero is five. One take away one is zero. So you don't need that zero there, but it's a negative 5.3. Okay. Okay. And then on number six, remember there's like a little imaginary plus sign here, right? So you're gonna add up all the negatives. Uh, rule number one, add up all the negatives. Negative 26, negative 53, negative 24, okay? So go and add those up. And keep your negative. Okay, so that looks that looks like it becomes now a negative 103. Plus, then you would add up all the positives, but you only have this one, so you, you only have a 20 to add to that. Okay, so now that's what you have. 
Okay, that's rule number two. So you're gonna to have to subtract and you're gonna keep the sign of the number with the bigger absolute value. See how that's bigger, 103? The answer is gonna end up being negative because the 103 is bigger than the poor little 20, okay? But you're gonna to have to subtract on the side. Show me your subtraction on the side. 103 minus 20. Three take away zero and basically 10 take away two. So it looks like that's gonna give you a negative 83. Okay, that's your answer. Yeah, okay, box that. Okay. And then you can do that too on the test. You're going to have a lot of scratch work on your test. So, you know, I know you had this calculation and you had this little calculation. You just box, you know, your final answer. Okay. Okay. And then on number seven, we have some um, fractions again. So the common denominator, least common denominator, if I look at multiples, I'm gonna make my list of multiples. I, I put the bigger number first, which is the 28 on the bottom, and then the 14. And I'm doing LCD, which is LCM. Least common denominator, least common multiple. So it doesn't matter which one you put first, but they're synonyms. And when I look at my multiples for 28, so that it goes off this chart, both the 14 and the 28 go off this chart, but you do have this one. So if I look at 28, use my ruler here. Okay, so can you see those numbers there? Okay, so list a few, 28, 56, 84, 112. 140, 168, okay, 196. I'll stop, I'll stop there. So let me write, let me write this down. Let me get my glasses. So numbers are small there. Okay, so let's see. So 28 was 28, 56, 84, 140, 168. I think I said I was going to stop at 196. Okay. And remember, if, if you just find the common denominator, you just multiply the bottom numbers. Look how big that's going to be. If you were just to do 14 times 28, that's pretty big, right? 392. So let me do that on the side here. Com that's a common denominator. It's not the it's not the least, but it is a common denominator. And if anybody wanted to do that, you could. You just have to be prepared to reduce quite a bit. Okay. Okay. And the, and you see, we're gonna. I'm pretty sure we're gonna find something smaller than 392 when we find the least common denominator. So with 14, 14, we have. See. Okay, see, 14 times 1 is 14, 14 times 2 is 28, 14 times 3 is 42, 14 is 56, 70, 84, 98. So let me write those down. So I have 14. And then I'm adding another 14, and that's 28. I'm adding another 14, that's 42. Oh, but look. See how right away I have a match right there? See that right there? See that match right there? Way smaller than 392, right? All right, so I'm gonna say the LCD, LCM is 28. Okay, now when I multiply that here, um, so when I come over here and I do a little multiply, 14 times what is 28? So you see one, two. So I put little twos here. And then two, seven times two is 14. 14 times two is 28, okay? Plus, this is gonna be now 28. Now, you know, this one's already done. You don't have to multiply by one. 28 times what is 20? 20 times one. 
this is already least common denominator, this kind of multiple is already 28. So you just need to do that here. Okay, it's the same. And then, and then this is rule number two. So you wanna subtract 15 minus 14 is one. And then you keep the sign of the number with the bigger uh, distance. 15 is bigger in distance, not by much, by one, but still it's bigger and you keep that sign. So it's gonna be negative one and this stays the same over 28. Okay, that would that would be your answer. Okay. Now, um, again, if you want to do the, if you want to use the 392, I'll rework that down here using the using the 392. You want to do that? Okay. So you're like, okay, you know, uh, 14 times what is 392. And so remember you use each other's factor. So that means 14 times 28 will go here. And then 28 times what is 392? Well, 28 times 14. So you use each other's factor. You just get really big numbers. So now here you're gonna do seven times 28 which is 196. And you already know that 14 times 28, remember, is 392. Down here, 28 times 14, you already know that's 392. But then you have a negative 15 times 14, that's a negative 210. But you see how large those numbers are pretty big, right? And this is still rule number two you're adding two numbers with different signs, right? This one's positive, this one's negative. So the rule says you have to subtract and you have to keep the sign of the number with the bigger distance. So 210 is bigger than 196. So this, this negative beats out negative over 392. And then when you subtract 210 minus 196, so this is a 10 and then you make that one a zero to borrow 10 minus 6 is 4 and you can't do 0 take away 9 but again you can borrow from the 1 I mean from the 2 make that decrease by 1 and now the 0 becomes like a 10 10 minus 9 is 1 and 1 take away 1 is 0 so now you have a negative 14 negative 14 over 392 okay and then this, this reduces um, probably by a lot of twos, reduced by a lot of twos. These are even numbers. So 14 divided by two is seven, and it's gonna be negative seven. And 392 divided by two is 196. And you see that can be reduced again by seven. Negative seven divided by seven is negative one. And 196 divided by seven is 28. Okay, so see how we get, both students get the same answer? Just this person has to reduce twice. And this time, this time we didn't have to reduce on this one, it's all on this one. Okay. But this one you had to reduce at least twice by two and by seven. Or you could have reduced once by 14. Negative 14 over 392 divided by 14. Negative 14 divided by 14 is negative one. And I bet that 392 divided by 14 is, see, 28. But most people won't, may not see the 14, but you can always try. Sometimes the sometimes when you reduce a fraction, sometimes the like the 14 and the 392, sometimes the smaller of the two, like the 14 out of the 392, sometimes the smaller two will go into it as the greatest common divisor. So you can always try that. If you get a decimal, then no, it doesn't work. All right. Okay, now the last thing I want to do in the recording 
um, is there's a couple extra problems I want to show y'all that I believe is in your homework set. So they just didn't put them in the workbook. So I always have to go over these two. Okay. So like this one, example. Go ahead and do this on your blank. You should have some extra paper. Like I'm using page 31 and it's still section 8.2. And it says determine if X equals two is a solution of absolute value of X plus 15 equals 17. So you're gonna have some problems like that. Determine if X equals two, is that a solution of this equation? Absolute value of X plus 15 equals 17. So what you would do is you would um, substitute. So everywhere you have an X, you're gonna plug in two. So you're gonna do absolute value of two plus 15, and then the question mark, is that true or false? Is it a solution? So um, if it is a solution, then a true statement results okay but if you get something false if you obtain a false statement then it's not A solution. So you might want to pause the video because I'm going to keep going. You might want to pause it if you're still writing and then after you write it then start it up again. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and start showing this. Okay. So I'm going to plug in substitute the two for the equation here. And now what you have to do remember is you have to you have to evaluate this first. So you're gonna to have to evaluate the absolute value. And the absolute value of two is two. So now you have two plus 15. And the question is, does that equal 17? So you just keep working down, 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 you're working downwards and two plus 15 equals 17. So yeah, that is true. That's true, not false. So because it's true, what that means is that means that so X equals two is a solution. Okay, so I have another one with um, this example. Determine whether X equals negative seven is a solution of x plus 3 equals negative 10. Determine whether x equals negative 7. Is that a solution of x plus 3 equals negative 10? OK. So again, what you would do is you would start by sub, which means substitute. 
everywhere you have an X, you're going to plug in negative seven. So this is becomes negative seven plus three. And the question mark here is, does that equal negative 10? And then when you work your way down, this uses rule number two. You're going to have to subtract the numbers, the seven and three, you're going to have to subtract. That gives you four. And then you're going to have to choose your sign. And you're going to choose the negative because seven is bigger in distance than three. So it's going to be negative four. So you have negative four. And then does that equal negative 10? Mm -mm, nope. That's false. So we put a line through it, the equation, to show that it's false. And so what that means is x equals negative 7 is not a solution. And I think I have one more of those to show you. I have one last one to show you and then I'll be done with my notes for A2. Is X equals negative four thirds a solution of three quarters plus X equals negative seven twelves. Okay, so again, you want to sub, you want to substitute. So everywhere you have an X, you're going to plug in negative four thirds. So you have three fours plus negative four thirds. And then the question mark is, does that equal negative seven twelves? Okay, so you have to remember whenever you add or subtract fraction, you got to find a common denominator. Okay, so you can do uh, four times three, which is twelve, or you can do multiples. And I think this time when you do your multiples, I think you all also are going to get twelve. So your de biggest denominator is four, and then three. LCD equals LCM. So four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12. Three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12. So you see, gives you 12. And it so happens when you do the common denominator, which you multiply four times three, it so happens that you also get 12. So this one is rare when that happens, but this happens, you get the same result both times, multiples and, and just multiplying the denominators. And that's okay, it's very rare, but sometimes that happens, but it is 12. So now you're gonna build these up and put little times. And for the four, if you count, four times what gives you 12? So one, two, three. These are threes. Three times three is nine. Four times three is 12. Okay. Plus, okay, now you're going to multiply these, put little times here. And on the three, count one, two, three, four. You multiply these by fours. Okay. One, two, three, four. So this is a negative four times four is a negative 16. And three times four is 12. And remember, you, you have to remember to work your way down. You're working your way down. So right now, this is still a question mark. Hmm, does that equal negative 7, 12? That's what you're trying to find out. Okay, this is rule number two. You're adding two numbers with different signs. So you know it's going to be over 12, because that's a, those are fractions, right, denominators. But you got to subtract. And you're going to do 16 take away 9. you got to subtract both of these. So you do 16 minus nine. You don't do set up nine minus 16. It's 16 minus nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it looks like it's seven. You see my fingers, it looks like it's seven, but it's gonna be a negative 
seven because 16 is bigger than the nine. So this would be a negative seven. So then we are working your way down. So then this is, this was true then, see? This gave you negative seven twelves, and that's what you're trying to find out. Does it equal negative seven twelves when you substitute it in? And you're like, yeah, this is this is true. So what that tells you is that the negative four thirds, this is a solution because you got something true. If you got something false, then it's not a solution. Okay. All right, so those are my notes for 8.2, and th those are your two rules. So you need to be, um, until we take our test in your mind, every day in your mind, you need to be thinking about these rules because these rules are gonna start piling up. I think we're gonna end up having four sign rules for the first test, and of course, some other things, but four main sign, I call them sign rule numbers, sign rule numbers or sign rules. So these are the, the first two that we hit. When you're adding two numbers with like signs and when you're adding two numbers with unlike signs okay so you you for rule one you add and you keep the sign for rule two you subtract and then you got to decide on your sign is it positive or negative so you go with the sign of the number that's got the bigger absolute value the bigger distance okay so you got you got to learn your rules got to learn your rules and you have to show your work you cannot just have answers in the computer um, just because you're just typing and no no math you've got to do the math yourself the calculator is just a tool just to kind of check your work make sure you're not making any mistakes right but you got to know how to do your your algebra for that okay okay good luck with that Bye.